Welcome to Chem 335. This is the very first video in a series of videos for this course. And we're gonna commence the course with the concept of aromaticity. Now, why you have to learn it? Well, because you have to do well on the exam. Now, that's not why you learn it. Throughout the course, the concept of aromaticity, which in turn reflects resonance, is a, is a property that we would come back to it over and over and over again. And if you don't understand what aromaticity or how does it influence resonance, then most likely you're going to constantly struggle against the concept of drawing resonance structures for some of the advanced concepts that we're going to learn. So with that said, I don't want to dwell too much into it, but I'm going to cut straight to the chase for the three criteria that a molecule as a whole must meet to meet the concept of aromaticity. The first one is it must be planar. Okay. Now we're going to do several smaller videos on doing some examples. Now, how do we know a molecule is planar is if it contains alternate double and single and double and single whether it's cyclic like as in a ring or not it doesn't matter but the idea of double single double what does this really mean it means the molecule is sp2 hybridized okay if the again all this only applies to the ring okay now we're dealing with aromaticity so this this phenomenon of double single double must exist within the ring okay so let me actually step back and draw this a little bit more professionally this idea of double single double must exist within the ring okay okay right now the second concept is it must undergo resonance. Now all this will make much more sense when we do some sample problems on this concept. It must undergo resonance, okay? Which is an extension of this idea of double, single, double. That is, let's say I have this, I'm not doing it for the ring, but I have this, okay? And then I have this. So here, this double bond could go here and this double bond could go here. Now what was single is now double, what was double is now single. So resonance is usually indicated by a double headed arrow. This indicates that the, the molecule can undergo resonance. So that means now this is what it looks like. Now this, this is potentially possible, okay? Because we had alternate double, single, double, single, now we can have resonance where what was double is now single and what was single was is now double. So if a molecule cannot go resonance, that means it cannot be aromatic. The third criteria is it must obey Huckel's rule. Okay, I am going to work out an example just below this to help you understand this. What is this Huckel's rule, which is four N plus two? Pi bonds, that's what it means, all right? So let me draw this molecule, which you will see repeatedly throughout the course. It's called benzene, okay? Now we're only focusing on the Huckel's rule part. Of course, if you apply the other two rules to this molecule, they would also obey. But what it is is you count the number of pi bonds this is a pi bond this is single bond and when you have another bond this is called a pi bond okay now how many bond is how many electrons are there in any bond whether it's single or or pi bond it doesn't matter they all have two electrons so this has two electrons so how many electrons does that add up to total you have six pi electrons right now what can you you must use this formula in a way that you should be able to produce six. If this formula can never result in six, 
that means it does not obey Uckel's rule. Now, if I put a value of zero for n, then I get just two, right? Okay, that's not what I want. What if I put one? That means I get four times one plus two. I'm able to reproduce the six pi, right? So that means I am able to accommodate the six pi in this formula for n equals one. So whatever this number is, if you cannot produce that number using this Huckel's rule, that means even if it obeys the above two conditions, it cannot obey the third one. That means it cannot be aromatic overall. So all three conditions must be checked right. So this molecule does obey Huckel's rule because I am able to produce the six by substituting one. All you have to do is basically substitute zero, one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera, until it can, that formula can produce a number of the pi electrons that you have, right? And this is all there has to do with the concept of aromaticity. Now on a couple of examples, I'm going to introduce you a couple of minor nuances, which essentially is a reflection of your general chemistry knowledge that you have learned. Now, if you forgot all about Lewis structures that you learned in general chemistry, that little nuances might sound a little alien to you, but trust me, it is not alien concept and it's not something you have never ever seen. It may not be that it doesn't appeal to you right away, but it is something you have learned. Maybe you forgot, maybe you didn't understand it in the first place. It could be one of those, but I don't want to explain the nuances here because this is simply the explanation of all the three criteria that must be met by a molecule for it to be aromatic, all right? So I'm gonna stop the video here because I wanna keep all my videos throughout the course with less than 10 minutes or around 10 minutes, not more than that. So this is the concept of aromaticity. And in the next two videos, we're gonna work out two different cases of examples. And then I want you to understand the problem even better, right? So stay tuned.